back, guys, to the GSL Crotus. Round of 16, day one. I am unstable, joined here by Wolf. We just saw Ness T take out in snare 2 0. We're now going to, about to go into Genius versus Coca. And now, because I've been waiting to talk about this, Wolf, the Alicia Coca game in their Code S group. I know you were there. It was pretty sick, man. I cast that game with you. <laughs> What happened was we saw kind of a variation of a six gate timing attack on mm -hmm. Taldarim Altar, and both Unstable and I are sitting there going, "Oh, he's going in Festers. That's really creative, but there's no way he can hold this. Like he's just not going to hold it. Yeah. He has no units, and then the Infestors come out and <laughs> they fungal and they walk away, and then they fungal and they walk away, <laughs> and then his units get their Alicia's units finally get there, and they'll have like two hit points left, and then a few Lings come in and they die. Yeah, and that's how it happened, and then. After that, he had taken a third base. Like It wasn't a six-gate all-in type of build. It was like a six-gate pressure while I take my third base. Then he got Colossi out, and there were just so many Infestors, and they Neural Parasite all the Colossi and just had this really strong composition with greatly upgraded units. The Ultras came out eventually. Well, he also, whenever game. Alicia moved out of his base like a millimeter, there'd be Lings in his third, and he just couldn't move anywhere. And it was really good to see those those lings with upgrades, with plus three upgrades and adrenal glands, take things down so quickly. It's not funny. But of course, this is going to be Metalopolis for this best three. Here we go for MVP's genius, Jung Min Su is of course on the team MVP. Rank 19th across the board for the GSL. Uh, won recently versus Virus and Top in his group stages. Pretty even across the across the board for his results though. Yeah, there's the you know the recent 10 sets. Five wins, five losses. He beat top and virus. Lost to Min. That's who it was. It wasn't revival. I was right the first time. <laughs> oh, it's a rare occurrence for me. <laughs> he beat Boxer, and actually that day was the day that Genius gave me an MVP shirt. I was sitting in the crowd, <laughs> and uh, then that was actually the same day that Slayer's Jessica gave me a Slayer's shirt. Like right after. The Whoa, haircut. Yeah, I saw him before. He was coming in, and he had his hands on his head, going, "Don't look at me." And everyone was just standing there smirking. That's interesting. I um, It's like Ensnare had something very similar happen to his hair. He had much longer hair before than his hair looked like that one time when he came <laughs> in. And I was like, whoa! The once so. a year haircut. Yeah, man. Has to go down that low. Usually happens during the summer. Things get hot. You get those haircuts, man. In Korea, it's actually much less hot than it was in the US when I was well, there. Well, it's supposed to be a lot hotter, but then we had that the weather stuff and it's pretty much raining every single day yeah yeah you got to bring an umbrella pretty much all the time even if you go out in the morning it looks like it's not gonna rain no it will anyway yeah and you know usually on stable night we just go ah it's not raining we don't bring it then later it does rain and you regret it <laughs> yeah of course Xenix Coca Choi Jong Hwan from Xenix a really underrated team been a lot of people yeah, think. it's gotten much, much better. And the thing is, it's not like one of those teams that had a lot of bad players and just suddenly got a lot of good players and then got better. The same players just got a lot better. Yeah. And of course, he did take wins off Alicia twice and, was, and lost to Asira in his uh, group pay, play. Four wins, zero losses versus Protoss, but four wins, six losses over his last 10 sets. So that says something right there. Yeah. CVP is his matchup. Done a great job. He looks a little sleepy. Um, or maybe he's just trying to focus his mind yeah, either I way. <laughs> I think he's just trying to focus his mind. I don't think he's actually falling asleep right now. But if he's falling asleep, that would be very bad. And his coach probably be slapping him up. <laughs> you can see him show up in the booth and just crack. Wake up. Play your game. Because a lot of the Korean teams are very strict about that. Yeah, well. they really are. You don't follow the practice regime that your uh, team has, then there are punishments. All right, the map is going to be Metalopolis first, as we were saying earlier. A very, very balanced map, very interesting map. One of the considered one of the best maps that Blizzard has ever made, actually, yeah. uh, by many. The gold bases were an interesting addition, and when the gold bases came out, it was one of the first times anyone had really seen gold barrels when they got into the beta and stuff, and it seemed kind of weird and new. But even a year later, we look at this map and say it's a great map. Yeah, something interesting here, though. Both players eliminated Crevasse. What do you think about that? Well, the Zerg player feels the Protoss gets a free base. The Protoss feels like the map's too big, maybe. I don't know. That's that's kind of unusual. I can't really see a reason why a Protoss would want to eliminate Crevasse for this matchup. I can see why Coca would, though, because... Well, maybe they don't want to play that style that we see all the time. Yeah, that's that true. There's usually a two-base timing attack from the Protoss, and the Zerg player struggles to take a third. That's kind of how that map tends to go. Yeah. Sometimes you can see it on this map, though. 
Speaking of this map, we're going to jump into it now. It's going to be Genius versus Koka. Who's going to take set one? Let's find out here at the GSL. Codes, I am Wet Wolf, and with me is Unstable. Did you just call yourself a Wet Wolf? No, I didn't, man. It sounded like it. <laughs> I did it, man. Over here at the 9 o'clock position, we have our blue Protoss hailing from MVP. Pretty smart guy. MVP, tune out. Yeah. They're banging the StarCraft things together. <laughs> <laughs> we should really know what those are called. I don't know why we don't. There might not be a name for them. They might just no, be inflatable things, man. There's a name. Inflatable sticks. A name for them. I just can't remember. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I'm like trying to think of it, but I just can't think of one. Oh, some more MVP players sitting over there hiding. We see you. We still see you. <laughs> <laughs> There's an opponent down here at the 6 o'clock position, our Red Zerg from Xenex. Xenex Kuka. That looked a little weird with the uh, probe mining there. <laughs> the probe <laughs> mining at his base. I was like, wait a minute. There he is, though. Looks much more alert now. I really just want to see this game to get the late game as well, because that's where I Coca seemed to shine. Spore crawler there in a sentry. I'm not entirely sure what those things were huddling together. Yeah. That was a pretty interesting sign. So this is going to be a speed lead span right off the bat for Coca. Very common to see on this map. Yep. And interestingly, Genius is actually walled off with his pile on this part of the wall, which does end up being something that players do on this map sometimes, because if you don't do that, it's difficult to have a hallway with your Zealot, and then if your opponent makes speedlings and just kind of forces your Zealot out of the way, you can just lose. Mm. If you're a Frost player, you know what I'm talking about. Like on Zelda Caverns, there's kind of a natural hallway that you can form, but on this map, there just isn't one. That's why you see him walling with the pylon. But it does expose the pylon, so a lot of people don't like to do that, myself included. Yeah. Even with uh, those tight wall offs, some Zergs have been using uh, drone drilling to get through and yeah. actually bust down that Zealot, which is extremely frustrating to some uh, Protoss players if they haven't seen it before. It is very difficult to deal with if you haven't seen it before, that's for sure. Genius taking a second gas immediately. Most likely we're going to see some sort of sentry expand from him. Right now, though, he's not researching warp gate. Okay, there he goes. Just waited a little bit longer for some reason. I was going to say, is he doing some sort of weird specific timing attack where you save 50 gas? Yeah, what would he possibly need 50 gas? Although, that being said, we have... Uh, had the pleasure of watching QXC do his build order things, and he will squeeze out five gas if he wants to. He to will, make man. Build work. And he will sit there for hours with his little text pad and go over it over and over and over again just to get that extra little bit. Yeah, QXC actually does so much stuff. You guys don't know, he takes a text file and writes down possible build orders to get one Hellion out two seconds faster. Then he tries six build orders in the build order tester. And if it doesn't work, he tries it again. And if that doesn't work, he tries it again. <laughs> He's actually so... He trains so hard, this guy. If you guys just don't know, you know now. He trains so, so hard on everything he does. We do have a proxy Stargate down here at the bottom Yeah, right this there. is actually coming back. When I say coming back, people used to do this a lot in the beta, and it was a really bad strategy because it was just like, oh, if you don't scout this, then you lose. Idra actually lost an open season one. To Lotzi, yes. to a strategy like this. It was two Stargates in that game, but you can just lose to this if you don't see it. Mm -hmm. And he is actually putting it in the he's put it in the most obvious place here, but it looks like Koka just might not see it, man. <laughs> well, if we have a look at Koka's vision here, just for a second for me, Wolf, I'm pretty sure... No, he hasn't. I, I thought something would have gone around that check around there, because a lot of Zergs do check all yeah, those little Yeah, just to make sure there's no pylon. Yeah. And it looks like Genius has locked out here. Oh man, this is... He's making a Roach Warren right now. He's only got two Queens. He's got a third one on the way. Right now, he's doing a fake expand during all of this, making Koka think that he's doing some sort of two-gate or three-gate sentry expand. And I was about to say, he's going to wait for the second Void Ray, and he is, in fact, in a way... Yeah, he he's... needs to wait for the second one, get a few more extra units out. He needs to clean up the Zerling as well, so that Genius... He doesn't... So Genius um, is either forced to make an extra move out, because if he... Mm -hmm. If the Zerling is still there, he's going to know there's no Nexus. He's going to kind of get suspicious. He's making a Spore Crawler right now. And there is three Queens on the field as well. He's making a Spore Crawler. You know why? Because he says, there should be more Sentries down there, or there should be a Nexus. Yep. What are you using your gas for? Maybe it's DTs. Maybe it's a Stargate. I want to know. So that Spore Crawler is going to be very helpful. 
But if it does get targeted down, that's when the Voiders are going to start shining. He's even making a Phoenix here to help clean up Queens. Yep. Second Spore going down. Well, this is actually going to work out well because here he comes through. He's going to be able to lift up that Queen as soon as the Phoenix finishes. Very quickly, he needs to be careful. Uh oh, he needs to pull those Void Rays back. There we go. He's, the Queen actually got away because the Phoenix was a little bit too slow, but he's going to get uh, quite a few drone kills. There we go. He does lift that Queen up. He's going to lose a this lot of health on the weird. Phoenix. I'm not entirely sure why pull he did Phoenix this this back. way. Oh. oh. He does have those Void Rays charged now, though. It's so Unless weird. He to uncharged. I thought he was going to do an all-in, but it looks like he just wants to try to take out this hatchery. Yeah. Um, and oh, he's going to go for it again. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I agree with this. The Void Ray taking a lot of damage here. He may take out the Queen, but I don't think it's really worth it. Well, he hasn't. Lo he did lose that one Phoenix a little bit. That the second Void Ray is on very low health. But the small Spore Crawler is going down. He's not going to do as much damage as he really wanted to. And that Spore Crawler came in at an amazing time. That really just turned the tide of that fight the entire way around. Yeah, Genius in a really tough spot here now. The Nexus just now being made. He's going to come in here try to find another Queen. There's a Spore here again, though. The Hydralis then may get taken out. Maybe. Yeah, he does have to cancel it. In fact, he didn't he cancel didn't it. Cancel. Oops. But it only costs like 100. There we yeah. go. He's out of range of the Spore Crawler here. He does, he's going to be able to get that one Queen down. He's got a second Phoenix. He's going to be lifting up the second Queen. No, he doesn't have enough energy by the looks. Yeah, I, he needs to... Whoa. Ooh, he's losing Yeah, Phoenixes. this is actually... What's from going a Protoss on? perspective, I'm watching this and just going... Oh, this, he's choking. There he's is, getting nervous. I'm not entirely sure what's no going on. There's no need to be losing those Phoenixes. He actually could have just won the game with, with the units that he had. And now he's getting a little sloppy. It looks like he is going to maybe target down this Queen. He's going to move it into that Spore Crawler range. He might get it down if he pulls back fast enough. There we go. But as he did that, the Spore Crawler actually rooted behind him, so... Yeah, he lost a Void Ray for a Queen. Never worth that trade. No. Um, Very far behind now. 49 drones and 35 probes. Two Queens still out on the field. He's not going to miss any injects. Um, Forge going up here for Genius. He's trying to hold his Nexus. I mean, he's in a relatively tough spot. Stargate has been spotted, is being taken out by Lings. Yeah, he's he's going to play from behind, man. Yeah, it looks like as a response to this, Coke is going to go and take that gold base. Oh, he changed his mind. Yeah, he's going to have to bring the Hydras. He realizes that he's yeah. got that Void Ray over there. If we're, look, if we're looking at it here, Genius cannot put any pressure on him anymore. At Absolutely all. not. So Coke could take one, even two bases and feel completely safe. He's already up on drones. He's up on supply. He's up on everything. And he has scouts all around Genius's base to see what's coming. He's taking that gold base again. And yep. it just comes down to not doing enough damage with the Void Rays. And interestingly enough, when the Void Rays were there and the Phoenix was there, if he just pushed with some sentries and tried to make a few more gateways, it could have ended the game. And if he wasn't going to do the gateways, if he wasn't going to do an all-in, I'm not entirely sure why he proxied the Stargate at close air distances. You know, there's just a lot of things that have been really weird about this game. Mm. And then when he attacked, he didn't micro correctly. He could have been attacking the Hatchery for a long time yeah. with the Void Ray instead of... I. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, Wolf, there are a lot of things that could have been right different. Um, but anyway, two hatcheries on the way, a macro hatch as well as that gold base like you were talking about. It looks like Coca going to try to push here with these slow hydras. There are a decent amount of sentries out though, so he's going to have to be very careful. There's also a photon cannon. I'm not sure if this is the best choice. He's no, probably just going to back fields. away. Yeah, yeah, I think he's going to want to run away here. He's forced. He's actually going to get caught with those hydras in the front. Yeah, this is not looking good for this engagement, but he does get away just barely. That was a close call. Losing those Hydras would have been pretty huge. Yep. Overlord, or Overseer, comes in here to scout. Will be taken out, but does see everything. Even gets oh, his Twilight. And slows down that plus one attack. Yeah, that was interesting. He could have waited a couple, like, even one second to get the, that tech out without it being seen, because that is huge here for Koken now as well. Speedling comes in as well into the natural. He everything now. He sees the Robo. He sees how many units there are. He doesn't see the Robo Bay. But, I mean, he has seen it's, it's everything else. It's kind of... It's kind of obvious, yeah. yeah. But he's spreading his creep further and further now. I think he's just going to be massing up. He is 30 supply up. Looking now at the drone count. 53 to 66. It's Overlord coming in yet again to see more tech. Yeah, he's just absolutely... Not taking any chances. He has scouted the mess out of him, man. Like <laughs> It's like he's got map hacks that just cost an overlord every few seconds. Yeah, but here we go. We, so we are going to have him chase down these stalkers here. Four skills. One four skill goes down. There we go. There's the rest of them. Cutting off the Hydra reinforcements. Yeah, you can cut off the Hydras. You can't cut off the Lings, though. Did take a lot of damage from those Zerlings. And the problem is, even though the Zerlings were cleaned up, 
They did a lot of damage. The Hydras did a lot of extra damage. And Koka can trade a little bit inefficiently right now because he's got three bases, one of them being the gold. Mm -hmm. He's in a spot where he can easily take another base, and I think he will pretty soon. It's important for him not to let Genius get that third base up and running when he wants to try and do it, though. Uh, Ventral Sacks on the way. And I think what we're going to see here, based on what's going on, is we're going to see maybe Overlord spread here to... Uh, Overlord creep spread to push these Hydras forward, allow them to retreat back. Then if he retreats back, he's just going to drop in the main, kind of do elevator stuff with those Overlords. It yeah, looks like he's going to come into the natural here now. Quite a few units. His overlords are trailing in, taking out that photon cannon. But there go the force fields, cutting off. But the thing is, he can just run those units back. There we go. Completing the, the wall in. Yeah, this is... Not looking good for Genius. I mean, even though he's cleaned this army up pretty decently, the trade is good for Koka. He is taking another base during all of this. One thing that Genius has going for him is he has faster upgrades. His plus two is about to finish, whereas Koka has no upgrades whatsoever. He's actually going to lose some of these overlords as well. Oh, almost lost two more there on extremely low health. He's supply cap at the moment, 184 over 176. Seven overlords in production, though, so we will catch back up very quickly. Looks like Genius is moving forward yeah, here. Coco is going to have to spread his units a little bit better, get a better concave before this occurs. There's only one Colossus in that mix. Good force fields here to help him retreat. Four Corruptors on the way. Overlord drops about to finish. Finally, plus one missile attack on the way for Coca. Doesn't have any other upgrades whatsoever, though. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see him just use all of his units as push forward, jump up right into the main, and just do the damage there, because Genius doesn't have, have his third up. He's got a couple cannons there to stop Ling run yeah, by. I think he's absolutely going to do a Hydra drop. There's actually no pylon on the edge of the base to spout, spot for it either. So he's yeah. going to drop some Hydras and maybe take out some gateways and then leave. Well, he's got the Baneling Nest on the way Yeah, well, he's going to be so. able to use those as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And here he comes over here on the edge. Maybe not going to actually drop. Most likely going to start spreading some creep, though. He's probably just going to try and split up the attention of Genius here. We did see him do this versus Alicia as well. And here he goes, the drop going through into the main. It's going to be right into the mineral line. Because Genius is too preoccupied with the units right out the front of his natural. Yeah, Ling's taking out a lot of probes here, forcing warp ins inside of the main rather than reinforcing at the front. And he does take out a few zealots here. The main army, though, not moving forward because it's morphing about 24 banelings first. <laughs> He's going to drop a ton of Banelings on top of this main army. The creep has been extended. There they are. Here we go. Loads up right as Genius pushes out. He might actually force an engagement here. Not going to be many force fields left for Genius. Got about four or five. There it goes yet again. The Overlord's coming forward. Corrupt is going to work on them as well. And here come the Banelings all the way through all these units. That just crushed all those sentries and stalkers. Genius tried to split, but it was a little bit too late. The reinforcements here for Koka streaming across. He yeah. might have enough to clean this up. Actually, he definitely have enough to clean this up. He's going to go into game two. Yeah, this, that's going to be it, man. He just crushes through. There were just four Corruptors. GG. Just four Corruptors was all he needed to clean up the last Colossus, force it back. Mm -hmm. He made just the right number of units, attacked at just the right times. Genius could have done so much better, though, with that first attack. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, when, Oops, you, have, when you have two <laughs> Void Rays out and your opponent doesn't know about them, and he doesn't have anything to deal with those Void Rays just yet. And you, you know, he has that one Queen who's kind of bouncing back and forth. He only has that one there. You just attack the Hatchery and then back away and then attack the Hatchery again. Then if the Queen gets so close to the Void Ray that you have to move back, then that's when you use the Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, you but he already had the Spore Crawler. You don't move queens. the Phoenix forward into uh, Spore Crawler range to pick up the Queen before the Queen's even attacking your Void Rays. <laughs> you don't do that. You don't have to do that. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> well... A few things could have gone differently for Genius there as well. He's uh, split at the very end. Uh, he did split, I think it was just like right after all the Banelings already landed. Uh, a lot of Protoss are learning how to do the Marine split for their Stalkers these days. Yeah. Uh, but it's something they need, they need to do. The Baneling drops are becoming more and more popular throughout all the Zergs, and there wasn't even any, fu any Fungals to stop Genius from moving yeah. away. I don't think he had Blink. Did he have Blink? I don't believe uh, he, he, he was trying at the to very get least, it. so yeah. yeah. A blink is very helpful against that, but if you blink back too much, then the Zerg army just gets too close to you, and then yeah. you can't blink back anymore. So, yeah, that that last engagement was just basically the the deal sealer. Um, you know, there, you could say he could have micro better, and he could have, but well, even really so, behind. I don't think there was much he could do because the sec even if he cleaned that army up decently, 
it would have been remade instantly with the you know him just pressing about four or five buttons on his keyboard, then everything's remaxed again. He was really behind after those void rays too. Yeah. Like he lost tech, lost a lot of units, didn't really do that much damage. Didn't make his nexus for a long time either. It was weird because if you're gonna do a build like that where you just make two void rays and then use phoenixes to kill queens, if you're gonna try to kill queens and not do an all in, yeah. then you don't need to make the stargate outside of your opponent's base. Well, on close air positions. Well, that being said, he could have been worried about an overlord coming through and seeing uh, at some point in the base. Yeah, uh, but that, uh, also the he put it where the pylon always is, man. Like I can't believe Coco didn't even see that. It was like <laughs> the riskiest, silliest thing ever. <laughs> but at the same time, the the number of sentries really tipped off Coco, and that's why that's yeah, four exactly. Crawler. If that's crawler wasn't there, it was pretty much game over. Yeah, that's something that a lot of Zerg players are starting to pick up on. Mm -hmm. When you're a Zerg player. And you scout the timing where there's normally about five or six sentries, either that or a nexus. If he's trying to do a greedier one with less sentries, yeah. there's either a nexus there or there's more sentries. Otherwise, there might be a dark shrine going up. There might be blink on the way, or there might be. Or it's something a lot of people don't think about. Base. Like they go, "Oh, he has sentries at his ramp." They he's don't doing actually a sentry count expand. Them. Yeah. yeah, they don't actually. They just assume. This is what I tell Tigon all the time as well. Stop assuming things and just know it. Yeah. And that's what Koka did. He had overlords everywhere, overseer everywhere. Ling got in there as well. Yeah, he actually scouted so much. It yeah. Was, he like sent an overlord in and it died, and then he just sent another one again like, immediately <laughs> afterwards. But of course, game two is going to be on crossfire. Interesting map for Zerg. It's, uh, it's just difficult to maneuver. And with the force fields, you can't really get a good concave at all. There's too many choke points. You have to go Mutas on this map. Yeah. You have to make it so that the Protoss player can't maneuver as well as he wants to against your Mutalists. You can't use Zerglings very well, or, or Hydras, because they just cannot maneuver, like you said, through the middle of the map. Yeah. Melee units on this map are just so hard to use, that's why it's really difficult for Zergs to play this map against Terrans and Protosses, because that core unit, the Zergling, just cannot really fight very well. But anyway, look, the map is loading, let's get into it. Are we going to see Genius bring it back, 1-1, or Koka take it out and go to advance to the round of 8?